Okay, what's next? So I'm so excited. We have a special guest today. Good, yeah. And Kamel El Cid is a yoga instructor. She has been practicing for over 10 years. She's an expert in the field of yoga and yoga therapy. She's had over a thousand hours of training and doing <coughs> yoga therapy, which is phenomenal. And she really is someone that is very well versed in using yoga as a tool to really help, whether it's her students or herself, which she's going to share, um, to help with reducing stress and to really, you know, connect that mind, body, spirit connection connection and Kamal is going to share some you know some yoga postures with us so a whole sequence but also she'll be dispelling some of the myths around yoga because people have misconceptions I think about yoga and that's something that we'll definitely be talking about so I, I can't wait to welcome her in. So, Kamel, we're so honored to have you here on the Dr. Janine Show. Welcome. Thank you, Dr. Janine, for having me here. I'm happy to be here, too. Good, good, good. So, we've got a ton of questions for you, so we're going <laughs> to... It'll be tag team. Yeah, okay, Norm and right. I. We'll gang up on her and tag team with all these questions about yoga. Okay. But she can handle it, because she's very yeah. zen and yoga. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, how can yoga help to reduce stress? Um, well, when we think of the mind body spirit connection um, if you affect the physical body so let's say when we practice yoga we're stretching muscles we're moving things um, we always say that the issues are in the tissues mm -hmm. and so we're stretching and releasing some of those issues and therefore reducing our stress okay so I have a question so let's say someone comes into your yoga studio and they're complaining of you know different muscle pains and would that be something that you would say oh that's a red flag you know that may be related to stress not that you're going to judge them or anything but that would that be sort of a telltale sign that there's some stress going on in their life <laughs> yeah absolutely i mean um a lot of stress r related um injuries or tension is as a result of, of the mind, like what we perceive to be stressful, yes. which then manifests in our body, right? We're holding on to tension and it shows up in the neck, it shows up in the shoulders, in the back. And so would yoga be something that, that helps? Like have you seen that, that it's very helpful for relieving that stress and that tension? Yeah, it is. Uh, again, going back to the mind-body connection, um, even in working out, like that connection, experiencing it, is not exclusive to just people who practice yoga. Right. Uh, if someone is working out or engaging in a, an activity that brings them joy, then they automatically experience that, that mind-body connection, right? They, yeah. They're exercising, they're doing what they love, and then they, they feel good, right? right? And so it's the same thing with yoga, um, except that we're adding in the, the spiritual part. Yes. So well, tell us about that. Okay. So uh, <laughs> when we hear when we hear uh, spirit in yoga, we often like things often get blurry. People get confused. They're not quite sure what to believe. Yeah. And so spirit comes from the Latin word uh, spirare, which means to breathe. Mm. And yoga is breathing like yes, that's yeah. that's the practice breathing through the postures breathing through the asana and that's what yeah. really helps to um to bring the entire thing together they say that the breath is the bridge between the mind and the body I love right that. so yeah. by breathing and focusing on your breath you're engaging the mind and then you're bringing the mind down to the level of the body yes right and so everything makes sense yeah Wow, I love now, that. I know, Dr. Janine, you practice yoga yourself too, but yes. I mean, is it really just though for primarily flexible people? You know, do I, is, <laughs> do I have to be able to touch my toes? She's uh, giving you that look, really girl. Easily? I don't know. <laughs> I actually do hear that comment a lot. Yeah. Um, do I have to be flexible right. to practice yoga? I often think of the analogy should people who have green thumbs? only on plants, right? <laughs> Not really. Exactly. So, some people are more intuitive in taking care of their plants, yeah. right? And so they know the right amount of water to give their plant. They know the, the right amount of light. 
And for yoga, it's the same thing. You have to learn, right? You have to learn to become flexible, both physically and mentally, the same yeah. way someone who's not intuitive about plants has to learn like what, what to give their plant in order for it to thrive. That's a great, that's yeah. a great way to look at it, yeah. right? I never thought of it that way. Have you, Norm? No, I never thought of it that way at all. Because whenever <laughs> I see people uh, performing or practicing yoga, um, I, it always seems like there's a lot of flexibility involved. You really have to be able to, and that, but I think it's great. I envy that. And I didn't know if that came from doing more yoga. I guess it does, right? The more you do it, the more flexible you become. Exactly. So most yeah. people you see are probably people who have been practicing for a while yeah. or people who are just mm. naturally flexible based on their constitution. Right. Right? Yeah. But do you find though, I mean, this is, I'm answering my own question, but certainly the flexibility, the longer that you practice yoga, certainly the more flexible you come, not just in body, but I've experienced in my own life mentally flexible, yeah. right? Absolutely. Spiritually flexible. Absolutely. I mean, isn't that what we all want, what we should attain to? And yoga could be a great tool, perhaps. I'm putting words in your mouth, but it could be a great tool, right, to help to to find the balance. When we talk in the show, Norm, as yep. you know, in our show, we always talk about mind-body-spirit connection. And for people that have thought, oh, no, yoga is not for me, we'd like to dispel that myth, right, um, that maybe it's something that would be a great tool to use for people to, who don't know where to start to find that balance between mind, body, and spirit. Agreed. Yeah. And I think most people, people come for that reason, for the flexibility. And I think yeah. later on there's a shift from what this can do for me physically yeah. um, to how I'm feeling mentally. My thoughts are more clear. Yes. Um, I'm more calm. I'm, I'm able to experience stressful situations with ease. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. And would you think, or have you encountered the fact, this is something that I personally experienced um, in the past, that there's a misconception that yoga is some kind of spiritual, religious kind of thing? Well, there, there is a spiritual aspect to yoga, um, but I think the misconception that it's a religious practice yeah. like arises because, uh, like, yoga is rooted like in Indian culture, right? Right. right? And um, originally yoga was actually a, like developed as a codified philosophy by a sage called Patanjali, like 200 BCE. Yeah. And his approach to yoga was that he dealt with the mental, like people's mental states, mm. right? So allowing people to shift from the obsession of their thoughts, right, and move into their bodies and sort of, of, of separating um, what's going on in the mind and having it like become real. Right. And so even his, his prodigy, we, ha we have BKS Iyengar and uh, Devi from the 1900s, they didn't refer to yoga as a religious practice. They mm -hmm. thought that yoga was a great tool for taking one from illness to health. Wow. And so they focused a lot on the asana, right. on the postures in yoga. Wow. Yeah. So interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm learning a lot. Yeah, me too. And I thought it's I knew a little bit about yoga. <laughs> Obviously, I do not. And that's why we bring the experts in, mm -hmm. like you. Kamel. So yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's It's so fascinating to me because it's like any subject. The more you delve into it, there's, there's really so much to, to learn and I think appreciate. Now, I have a complete new appreciation for yoga, which I love, mm -hmm. I've loved anyway, so right. that's fantastic. Um, so I know that in preparation for today's show that you were able to put together a specific sequence of the postures for us to help with reducing stress. So we're going to take a look at that in just a second. Um, but yeah, is it is it possible? So that's my question. Is it possible to use yoga with a specific sequence to be able to, you know, in the moment, if you're having a stressful time, a stressful moment, to take a moment for yourself and actually use it as a tool to decrease your stress? Absolutely. Um, I think what each individual does uh, would be specific to how the stress is being manifested in their body, so how it's showing up. You know, some, per some people may experience uh, pains in their shoulders, another person may not. Um, 
but just in terms of the sequence that we created, it, it sort of was created taking in all of those possibilities of where people could experience tension. Okay. And so the idea is always to release the accumulation of tension that the stress has caused in the body. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So that's where the Is that where an emotional release would happen? Is that what that would be? That could definitely be oh. that as well. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about men too, yeah. because okay. you know I, th I I don't know I'm not speaking on behalf of all men that is for sure, <laughs> but I go to the gym more and I pump iron and do weights and all that sort of thing, and uh, but I've also tried yoga, okay. and I will say this I have never sweat as much. And I was an athlete as a kid. Soccer, hockey were my games. Uh, working out, I sweat, but not like in yoga. Truly. I mean dripping off me onto the mat below like I'm causing a puddle. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not trying to be too graphic. And was it a hot yoga class or just regular? No, regular. No. Wow. And I'm not trying to be too graphic, but uh, I was so actually impressed by that. I had no idea that's what was happening in my body. But do you find generally a lot of men, stereotypically at least, uh, would not attend your class or don't come to yoga as much because they don't understand it. They think, oh, that's a woman thing. <laughs> what do you think? I think previously that definitely was uh, the sentiment uh, from men, but I've been teaching for six years now and more and more I'm seeing uh, male presence in the classes. Um, I think naturally there will always be disparity in terms of who's coming to the class because I think there are more women in the population than there are men. Um, but I think over time that gap is being just shortened. Yeah. yeah. I like yeah. it. I find it really, really interesting, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I wonder, I mean, historically in India, would it be more men that practiced yoga Actually, years yeah. back? Yeah. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yoga was definitely um, practiced by men. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. More than women. Yeah. We were so there you go, Norm. Thank <laughs> no, there's you. no excuse. You're right. <laughs> Gotta get you into the yoga yeah. studio. <laughs> I want to try that hot yoga too.